turned off for LCS, so yes. no need to see that in Picker Ban phase. Hadn't really been relevant, but we will see what the power picks and bans will be here since we are still on patch 6.3 for this week. The live version of the game is currently 6.4, so this is what people were playing on mm -hmm. a couple of days ago before the patch. Graves Poppy are going to be the start. We've seen a lot of people banning that Graves now away from Fang, away from Proxen, trying to get the power out of that top lane and really make them go with something that is kind of just consistent, not to completely carry the game itself. Yeah, Gragas was the most picked champion across the European and North American LCS last week. Uh, falls on the ban phase, even though Dardoch had a relatively underwhelming game with it. Also, have to note, I was tweeting to Loco Doco, you know, thank you for letting me cast an Uter game when they lost to Immortals. Yeah. He said, you know, I think our Uter's a lot better than what we showed. We'll show it better in the LCS next time. So I, I got my hopes up already that we'll see an Uter somewhere in this pick ban phase. Team Liquid has the flexibility of being red side here to possibly land some counter picks. So we'll see if the situation is right. And I hope to see. It would be a pleasure to get a cast with you and the man bear, Turtle Phoenix. It would be my second time. It would. Casting Uter, maybe a chance to cast him winning. What are the chances? You play it professionally and then you never get to cast it. Lulu Callista now banned out. So we see a few more top tiers. Safety for the Kog'Maw that would uh, could be played. Also banned away. Fang looking at the Nidalee gives Proxen a chance to be a bit aggressive in the early game. Yeah, the Nidalee is something that is very often first picked lately. The speed at which Nidalee can clear the jungle and also the safety mm -hmm. in which Nidalee can counter jungle because she gets so much movement speed, pouncing through brushes, yep. also able to hop over walls. It's just really, really hard to shut that down in any way, shape, or form. Still going for the Kogma. They feel like they can protect it. We'll see what else they put on the board, but Liquid chooses a pretty squishy comp to start. Yeah, well, keep in mind, Kogma is still absolutely ridiculous on patch 6.3. Yes. It's actually banned yes, in, most, in most games. So the fact that it fell through and then Team Impulse decided that first picking Nidalee was more important mm -hmm. means it is also very important to lock down the Kogma. Uh, they do not have Lulu there to protect it or a Braum. So two of the best protectors of the Kog'Maw right. aren't available, but it is still an absurd amount of damage. I, I wonder what Impulse is thinking here too, because they say we'll ban Lulu and then we'll have we'll be able to make this comp. But now do they say, let's get the comp to kill Kog'Maw. We'll switch things around, play what you're comfortable with. They probably aren't changing too much, but the Bard does come out something to get to that back line as well with the Ari. And you're yeah. looking at the Janna and the Lee Sin. A little help for disengage and safety. Yeah, Dardoch, we will see the debut of his Lee Sin mm. here on the LCS stage, which will be pretty exciting. Yes, and then, it yeah, will. Matt's Janna, just because all the other protection options had kind of been gone from Kog'Maw, makes sense in this context. And the actual initiation from Team Impulse, yes, a Bard can add, but you need to be able to follow up after right. the fact. Uh, so they do not have much in their team right now. I like the Bard more for the fact that they're taking it away from Matt. He's looked really yep. good on that champion. Definitely helps hurt the initiation, if you will, of Phoenix and the rest of the team. And what does Phoenix have? It looks like that Corky will be his as the first pick, and it would sit, and then the Kog'Maw. So it's going to be top lane here. Lower low is actually going to get that. As on the other side, Impulse waits for pick four or five for themselves. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're probably going to try and pick some really hard initiation mm -hmm. here to try and get in on the Kog'Maw. Uh, and I actually wouldn't be too surprised if Team Liquid just picked Nautilus here because it's against a Malphite and the you can awesome either go up. the split pushing Nautilus build or just a monster tank, uh, which with the way Team Impulse has their team set up uh, would be a very good front line to stop people from following up on a Malphite initiation. Add that to the fact that the Poppy is banned, which is what Lolo had been relying on a lot. What are they doing? Lower load, mainly on tanks. You got the Nautilus right. Looks like they will lock that in. And it's going to be the Malphite Nautilus lane. Lisa in Italy. Looking at that Corky versus TF mid. And then the AD carry lane of Kog'Maw, Janna. So not a whole lot of protection for Kog'Maw. Piglet's definitely going to have to do some moving and shaking on this one. There is safety there, yeah. but not what you would think. I do like the Team Liquid composition. I think they have a decent amount of cohesion considering mm -hmm. the bands and still manage to pick up a lot of the power picks. Uh, and Team Impulse kind of had to make sure they go all in on the initiation right at the end, which made the lane matchups for Team Liquid fairly easy to pick around. Yep. Uh, the Corky will do fine against the Twisted Fate. The Nautilus will be very easy to lane against the Malphite. So I do slightly favor the Team Liquid draft here, but Team Impulse does have the initiation, so with proper execution, they'll be able to take down Piglet's Cogbot. If 
Fang can still make an impact from that top lane. He's had quite a diverse champion pool since he's been back. But like Cyrene said, having quite a bit of trouble after they got that first win with the team. Impulse and Liquid really needing to make a move here to keep an eye on those playoff spots. As the coaches head off, it's now up to you guys. Will Liquid keep themselves in running for the playoffs, or will Team Impulse catch them in the standings? Let us know by tweeting at LOL Esports, the hashtag TIP win or the hashtag TL win. And we'll make sure to tally up those votes as we get into game. You've seen the comms. Piglet now on the Kog'Maw without too much protection, but we know him to be kind of going on to champions where he can say, I will carry this game. Give me a few of the utilities I need, and we'll get to the, get to the Nexus. Yeah, and Piglet's positioning has been immaculate throughout the split. Mm -hmm. So if there's a champion that needs to be able to position properly so he can sit still and fire, it's a good one. And it's it's not the ideal protection composition for the Kog'Maw, but it's right. still pretty good because of the Janna and also Nautilus. It's very hard to walk past a Nautilus. He roots you with his auto attacks. He slows you every four seconds with his E. And then his Q and R are even more powerful mm -hmm. CC tools. Uh, so very difficult, actually. Nautilus can be used as a protection champion as well as Janna and as well as Lee Sin. So a lot of, yep. a lot of appeal there for Team Liquid. I do like it. Lorlo can go in on that choosy damage target to alt and start locking up the rest. Be tricky. We'll see how they take to it. And it's going to be Impulse here. It's right to the bottom side. Get some wards in and they will be safe on that. It's mm -hmm. not going to be the same trade, but not as deep for the side of Team Liquid. Yeah, so I mean, it's a blind invade from mm -hmm. Team Impulse. They invade all five into that side of the jungle. Uh, with Bard and Twisted Fade at level 1, Bard's Q is really, really good for catching people off, especially when you're invading the jungle, so not the most dangerous invade. But what it does mean is that that Team Liquid <laughs> can go back by a sweeper and clear one of the deep wards, but uh, yeah, it means the Team Liquid got deep wards in tip side as well because of the blind invade. It doesn't gain them much, mm -hmm. but it does uh, posture and kind of say they're going for lane swap, but then both teams fake each other out, and we're actually going to get standard lanes. <laughs> Something I like, play-by-play, play, is always want to see the fights. We have Cleanse in the mid lane here for Phoenix. He's looking to stay away from gold cards. And already the red damage to come in. So, Pyrian starting with pick a card, trying to add a little bit of aggression to the lane and doesn't even worry. This first wave is just going to get him to level 2. You can see they don't care about the damage. It'll be interesting, though, to keep an eye on the first bit of jungle pressure since those lanes won't be helping to push turrets as their standard. Exactly, and Nidalee has been a pretty high performer in standard lanes because of how quickly the Nidalee can clear the jungle. Uh, red buff right here. Sometimes the Nidalee just goes straight after level 3 and invades the blue buff and then tries to fight yeah. the jungler there. Uh, also have to track that with whether or not Proxen decides to gank mid since Phoenix is looking to push in fairly early. So already two and a half minutes into the game, we're getting some pretty important jungler decisions. Proxen has actually not had the cleanest jungle clear and he's quite low. Pretty effective there at the Raptors. Cosmic Binding just misses on Piglet stepping forward. He's actually walking up towards the wave to get those attacks in. Mash is trading back nicely. So even trade, both teams trying to get a bit of an advantage here in the lane, but no level two advantage game. Yeah, but I mean, you can already see the speed difference between these two junglers. Yeah, Proxen's flying. Yeah, Proxen's at the blue buff. Dardock just finishing his corner of the jungle. If you and, could place a ward yeah. and safeguard all the time, you could you could make Nidalee, Nidalee range. Yeah, one of the more ridiculous parts about jungle Nidalee is the fact that the spear roots the crab to make you deal more damage to it. Uh, there we go. Full health. Getting level 4 and able to get a nice flank on this gank. Lorlo will have to watch out here. Throws over the wall, so he's got safety. And he's going to be coming up to the brush. No word from Lorlo just yet. This will be the flash on five minutes. Nice mark. The shield goes on to mitigate some of the early damage, but he should be able to make it under the turret. Gets himself in front of the enemy Whoa. for Yuri. Oh, Proxen, no! Goes in, he's getting the attacks! That's the Whoa. passive! That's the Riptide! And Cat's down! Proxen goes down for first blood. Proxen kind of lost his mind right there. Lorlo saved his flash in case that gank was going to happen, and you can absolutely flash away from the pounce damage. Whew. Total disrespect there by Proxen. Proxen thinking that Lorlo wasn't going to have the reaction time to flash a Nidalee Pounce, but he misses all the spells oh. once he dives in. Lorlo roots him with the auto attack, gets first blood and double buffs. So in what could have been a beautiful gank by Proxen, Lorlo was going to be pushed back in turret, losing a big wave. The lane would have been frozen. He would have basically lost the lane off of this gank right here. Lorlo, he's already lost the lane. You do not need to punish him more. Watch this. Flashes, misses his swipe as well because of the flash. 
And then, yeah, Lola just presses his buttons after a nice reaction flash and gets rewarded after a gank Ooh. that should have shut him down. Already in the face of Prox, and Dardox says, you may have a kill. I'm still going to try to mess with your jungle. We'll see how uh, Fang can get back into this one. Gate taking quite a bit of damage. Great focus from Piglet and Matt. Mash is on the side trying to deal damage. Piglet doesn't even really see him. That double TP coming in. One is stopped. That's going to be Fang staying in the top lane. Oh. And both have been top. Another jungler died. <laughs> oh, this one is going to go well for Team Liquid. Oh, no. Wow. This game right now, back and forth, mainly going in the favor of Team Liquid every time it tries to go back in the favor of Impulse. Heavily going in the favor of Team Liquid Riv and some rather crazy engagements. A lot of the time, you know, at least before the buffs in patch 6.3, Kog'Maw was weak in the early lane and had to be very passive. But if he presses his W, especially with a Janna Shield on him, he's going to be able to rip through a fair amount of damage. And the early trade on here is favorable to them, but the main thing is the level advantages. It's two level fours versus two level threes. So Team Impulse needs to back away pretty much right from the get-go here. The Janna Shield comes in right at the end. Both teleports are canceled because uh, they didn't think they'd be able to clear on MASH, and then if Tip would have teleported, then they would have died to the two people. MASH does flash away, but the main difference here between the Lee Sin and the Nidalee dive is the fact that he's ganking someone where he has some backup. The right. shield from Matt is able to keep him alive just long enough. They secure yet another kill. Quick movement in the early game here. So Proxen trying to start a lot. Really lighting the fuse in each lane, but it seems to have backfired so far. Lore low. A level six Nautilus. Gonna get a hit on Fang. That's the flash down, so he doesn't have any more ground to gain. And that's a nice hit. Team Liquid gets one now onto Fang. Yeah, and there, there are a lot of misplays happening from Team Impulse yep. right now. A Nautilus Ultimate will follow you through your flash. He had the Nautilus Ultimate channel on him, flashed away anyway, and then it, it, it easily lines up for Dardark to land as Lee Sin Q. So he's pretty much dead regardless. The only way Fang can avoid that is, if possible, if he waits for the knockup to hit and then flashes before Lee Sin Q happens. Right. He makes it too easy on Team Liquid. And a lot of these kills are kind of being gifted to Team Liquid, which speaks to Team Impulse's lackadaisical early game. We said at 15 minutes, they're averaging an over 2,000 gold deficit. Well, they're 1,500 gold down at seven minutes this game. So yeah. it is going from bad to worse. Kind of giving the other team gold at this point with the ganks not going as well as they would like. Still, pressure being able to add to the lane here from Piglet, and they don't seem to be respecting it too much. The binding slows them down, but setting things up here for Dardog. Pink oh, wards down no. the lane. Gate's gonna walk right into this one. The ward just to the left to get the angle on the kick that he wanted, and another kill for Piglet. Well, I guess it's the first. He's got assists, but on a silver platter. Yeah, Dardog has been everywhere, and this is a snowball effect from when Proxen yeah. gave away his double buffs in the top lane. Nidalee is supposed to have a jungle speed advantage over Lee Sin, which prevents him from getting all these free ganks. But now the fact that Dardoch is more farmed than the Nidalee, Proxen has mm -hmm. to defer to Dardoch, and it just unlocks Lee Sin to kind of be his old ridiculous self. Yep. Uh, Dardoch also playing it very well. Beautiful war jump into the kick right there, and Team Liquid is running away with this. So we'll see. Dragon now going over to Team Liquid. Proxen's been in the face. I'm sorry, Dardock has been in the face of Proxen even after we saw him in the top lane, making sure the cat stays down. And again, just a few steps behind Dragon going down. And this mid lane actually hasn't gotten too much damage. Who's that really going to favor, actually? 73 to 64, but we haven't seen the TF add map pressure yet. Absolutely. I think this is a favored matchup for Corky in the first six or seven levels. He has better wave clear and just better trading overall. And the way that a Twisted Fate would try and come back in the game as usual is to try and impact the side lane. So it's really on Phoenix to just keep the pressure on Pyrian, keep the wave push in his turret, keep him low, so that if he does go for a gank, he loses turret pressure. Exactly what's happening. Going over to the left, this is one of the times he's left lane just to grab a blue, but he's forced in. To clean up this wave, 2k gold lead, 2.4k going in the favor of Team Liquid. We're just coming up on 10 minutes. Yeah. This uh, one is worse than average for Team Impulse, and it's a great bounce back for Team Liquid as well because they themselves are also coming off an 0-2 week. They had tough matchups. They played the remodeled Echo Fox as well as the Unstoppable Immortals, so a tough 0-2 week, uh, but you know, they are bouncing back well. Yep. The willingness to go for those early game plays 
uh, has really paid off for them this game. And it's allowing them to feel comfortable, comfortable champs they got in select and some of those high priority ones we were talking about as well to make a pretty nice composition. Phoenix can easily make plays on this Corky late game. Just needs the chance. Already pushing the lane up, making sure that Pyrian has to stay in that one. Proxen down to the bottom side here. He is waiting on the wing to see if they get any catch. Maybe it's going to be the tempered fate, but gate is five, so they might be planning a fast level here if he gets it in time. Matt is six, so it should be soon for gate. Yeah, well, they're going to try and stop. Piglet gets Whoa, rooted. Oh, Matt, step back. Piglet took quite a bit of damage. Double hit. Fang misses with the flashes from Liquid. They're under period. Gate and Mash now under the turret. Jardock went a little too hard. Now we're back to Liquid side. Three on the outside of the turret, but they have grabbed two for one with quite a few summoners being blown. Yeah, Phoenix with the package into the turret, yeah. and it becomes a 5v5 turret dive, but Team Liquid has such a big lead, and Pyrian teleported in on top of the package burn, which does more damage than Rumble Ultimate, so... Again? They're gonna look to the continue this. The fight under the turret, another shot, Phoenix forward! It's the Frost Bomb connection! And now they're onto the turret, Liquid not giving Impulse an inch. Yeah, Fang is not at the point where he is a big tank right now. So if they do get some CC down on him under the turret, no one on the team has shields or heals. They are also all out of summoner spells. So they actually had to concede that turret. And it just leads to even more pain. So let's let's actually watch this because the ward is spotted. And because they catch Piglet, all the teleports come in. But then the package is used pretty much <laughs> as the Twisted Fate ultimate goes off. So Pyrian already taking damage from the package. He's exhausted right on top of it. Yeah. And it just creates this zone that stops Team Impulse from getting any kills forward and also makes it difficult for them to run away. So even though the turret was there, it wasn't that big of a problem for Team Liquid, who now have a massive lead. And look who's back for mid lane farm. 110 to 96 as that begins to grow. Phoenix with that blue buff can easily clean all of this up. See how Impulse can really start to claw themselves back into this one. So far, it hasn't been grouping up Team Liquid whatsoever. Yeah. Two, zero, 3 lore low. Was the, he was the first focus of the game. And for, for many teams, it might be the top laner. Lore low has had a bit of trouble in his games, hasn't been able to do too strong. Fang as well, so why not get him going? And it backfired. Yes, yeah, specifically when Immortals was up against Team Liquid, they said our game plan was going to be to shut down Lorlo. Hmm. And they did. They just heavily ganked his lane. They even had a mid laner roam up top for a three-man gank when he was level five, and they right. just, they ruined his day. Uh, this time, again, they try and get early gank, and it wasn't like a difference in Team Liquid strategy, like Dardock was there for a counter, but he was playing safe enough yeah. that he dodged the gank, and then he capitalized on the other team over-aggressing. Like and quick, he's reaping the rewards of that. A quick banner of command as well has already been used by him, as that was his first item. And here's the snowball continuing to roll down the hill top tier two being taken down and they're actually pinging on the turret. They have assist calls coming in as well. I think it's just to clear the call is actually to head out. Yeah. It pings on to uh, Rift Herald. Grab that and get somebody pushing the lane. Yeah, well this game is just so accelerated yeah. right now. We're only 12 and a half minutes in. You're thinking, okay, they killed the second tier turret in top lane. I was lane. like, here they go for Bear. Yeah, normally oh. you turn around for Bear. <laughs> Calm down, seven minutes away from that being a possibility. So they'll just take the good old Rift Herald as Team Impulse sent a bunch of people bottom lane. Yeah, Team Liquid has a huge edge. They're hitting their item power spikes. Yeah. And I think they're going to continue to group around the map and just force down turrets. They've been doing it picture perfect so far. The mistake would be to slow down and give Impulse time here. They still have a Wombo Combo comp. You get a good tempered fate into a Malphite, and you are going to be in the wrong spot. Our Pyrian will have any time to get in, uh, all the time, I should say, to get in position and find his target. True. I do kind of think, though, that for that to happen, that type of wombo combo from Team Impulse, they at least need to finish their items. They are actually behind right. in every major item power spike that you can think of. It's a Rage Blade already being completed, as well as being on his way to a Hurricane for Kog'Maw. Yeah. Trinity Force Corky, Banner of Command on the Nautilus, which is kind of a power spike. Uh, no no major items completed, aside from the Lich Bane that Pyrian just finished. Feel good to head in and know that the team is just happy enough to engage on your Wombo combo. This does not feel good. Feels bad, yep. man. Eight to one. Bad. 15 minutes coming up on the time. Definitely a, an increase, I'd say, unfortunately, as we were saying, for Tip being at such a deficit here in this part of the game. And really nothing has been done to fix it. Liquid's able to grab another objective. 
really needing to be conceded right now by Impulse with their lack of map focus. Proxen doing what he can, but it's easily just walked over here. They can't even push pick wards forward. Liquid's doing a nice job at, at kind of strangling this one out. Yeah, and this is one of those big confidence building games if mm -hmm. you're Team Liquid. You come off an 0-2 week, and everything just kind of goes their way. They have a good draft, yep. they get a lot of high party champions, the other team makes a mistake early, they capitalize on it beautifully, they make a bunch of other aggressive plays. Nothing has gone wrong for Team Liquid in this game, and that makes you feel great. Uh, and yeah. they're using that to just continue this momentum forward in this game. Confidence to make plays, make moves around the map, and knowing that you have hardly any wards on your side. Right now they're sitting on the two far sites and really just the sweeper of map. They know they have control of this as their wards have moved up. And now with vision on tip, clearing waves and whatnot, there'll be more push here. Dardoch's gonna enter the jungle as you see Piglet pretty much by himself farming down in the mid lane. That's how confident these, confident these guys are. Yep, and Team Liquid doing a lot to strangle out Tip right now. This is the next natural course of action, and they see the Malphite in the bottom lane, mm -hmm. so they're just they're threatening this mid lane turret, but they're also keeping pressure on the side lanes. There's right. going to be a banner minion in the top lane. Corky is able to farm the bottom lane. Decent mobility. He'd be able to make it up uh, in this game as well. And like we said, we're only 15 minutes in, so Team Liquid making sure they don't push too, too far. I think that's the part I have to keep reminding myself, is this game is accelerated. You look for different things to be happening when you go to a next lane, but still the slow push and everything being set up. No final dives just yet. I don't even think Liquid could make it to the Nexus at this point, with the death timers being low. But they're still trying to fish for fights. Why not clear the map that much faster? Phoenix is just catching. I don't think he cares, though. Yeah. He likes to play kind of dangerous with his champions and always be able to kind of slip his way out of the situation. Yeah, it's burned him a few times this that, year. Yeah, that's true. I've uh, definitely seen that. Uh, but actually, there is not much that Team Impulse can do right now. Mm -hmm. uh, based on the early lead from Team Liquid, based on the banner minions being completed before Team Impulse can put a Zerah portal down or anything, uh, whenever the banner wave starts accumulating, Team Impulse has to send an AD carry to go and clean it because they don't have anything to, to cork the wave, yep. so to speak. And now with that Zerat portal even finished, it's going to go towards the bot lane because top still has a second tier too. Won't get very far. So not getting really the benefit that you can out of this. It'll be able to slow down the lane slightly. Yeah. But he did put the portal really far back. Right. So... The minions aren't necessarily going to get caught on it. Will help a little bit pushing it out there. I'm going to cluster at the wave. Focus somewhat towards the bot side Pull jungle here. Ah, yeah. uh, he doesn't even get the last hit. <laughs> Malphite things. Yeah, another big item completed by Piglet. So he's at a mega power spike 17 minutes in right now. I think basically Team Liquid is waiting on third dragon in there. Yeah. This is a game I feel Piglet, or uh, Piglet himself, he has tried to play it with the team, but the team has tried before where Piglet's on that hard carry, but a few of the lanes die too much, and then he is actually obliterated in the fights because they can get to him immediately. This is all of the pieces coming together in the composition where let's fuel up Piglet and he'll be the, that guy to go crazy, but it's actually happening in the other lanes as it goes. Piglet hasn't even had time to be in most of these fights that the team is taking. They just end so quickly. Now yep. towards the top side, Rift Herald's going to be theirs once again. They don't want any objectives going over to Impulse. No chance for them to breathe life back into this game. And we're going to be looking at a 6,000 gold lead here as they keep picking up objectives and turrets across the map. This isn't your Immortals game is over by 18 minutes and 12 seconds yep. against Team Impulse. This is... More of a team liquid, just don't give them any opportunity Very methodical. to come back in the game. It is, like, you could say, you could make the argument that team liquid should be playing this a little faster, and hey man, they have like Lee Sin and Nautilus, they should be doing turret dives, but they are very comfortable with Corky on their team right now, that they can wait a little bit, and just wait for the third dragon and the Baron to be up and then take down right. the rest of the turrets. And Baron coming up in a minute and 16 seconds. There is there is no rush for them. I think that trigger moment is really on the side of Impulse here. What kind of play can they make when you got a Phoenix jumping in your face? They actually all turn and have to back up, not knowing what the sides provide for Liquid. They don't know where the team is. Oh, oh bang, ulted in on the Sonya's. Phoenix gets out alive. 
They're gonna be able to start backing up on this one. Nobody's down. The Howling Gale right on the map. He gets the heal, but he does go down. Fang tries to get himself back in, but they've wasted quite a bit here. I say used quite a bit to get what they've had in the fight. Lore low, very low, but gets a nice Storm Shield in from that. He's gonna go down. Wow, what play is coming across so far? It was actually Dardock coming in with the shield, since Matt is already dead. Yeah, and it actually comes out to a one for one. Just as I say, there's no rush. Team Liquid rushes into yep. a play. Uh, Phoenix, Valkyries forward. Burns is cleansed super early in the fight. The rest of the team slowly collapses in. And that was messy. Riv. Fang whipped his Malphite ultimate early on the Bardolph, which could have secured some nice kills. Whoops, a daisy. Uh, Bard does tick him with one half of his Q. It doesn't connect the second end. But then Matt, instead of flashing towards his team, flashes away from his team, which makes the TF ultimate actually fairly easy to yeah. land. Fang then flashes for the finish. And you got to kind of feel for Proxen at this point, as he's like, I can get him. I'm going to jump yeah. in again. Uh, but Lee Sin shield, Nautilus auto attacks him to yeah. root him, and it's very easy to kill him because Piglet is Kog'Maw. And Proxen is just a little baby Nidalee. <laughs> so... You know, was an opportunity for Team Liquid Balls to come back and maybe kind of a, a mental check for Team Liquid to be like, yo, 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 we were taking the slow. What what gives? Yep. Why do we decide to do that random dive? And to figure out when that, that hit came in. And we were just talking about that too for Phoenix. One of those moments going to bite him. When did they kind of get a play effect on the team? And that one bit him in the butt pretty hard. Hmm. One for one overall, but they had much stronger of a push if they all stayed as five. Here we go down towards the bot lane now. You can see Matt trying to get goal side here of the prize. He's going to back himself up to stay with the team safe. That part ultimate to the yeah, Shouldn't actually do too much. The calling comes out nicely. TP, or Fang's already coming in. That was a TP. Now this is Lorlo's TP, so he comes in. Very nicely timed by him. Yeah, they're just looking to power down this turret. And if Team Impulse stays, Right here, I'd imagine Team Liquid will channel an Nautilus Ultimate on a squishy while focusing the turret, and then after the turret is down, fully engage the fight. I do not think Team Impulse can defend this without Bard Ultimate, but they are still staying there, so we'll see if they can do it. They do not have Culling, they just have the Twisted Fate for the wave clear. Malphite Ultimate does the seam up. Bang looking for the right hit. Tempered Fate is down, the turret. They gotta give it up. Mid lane is the click here for Team Liquid. Ping goes down now. Impulse, they don't have too far to rotate. It should be actually quite easy for them to get back over here and put up some defense. Actually, looks like Liquid doesn't want to overstay their welcome. They're going back to the methodical business. They saw that they had some trouble when they tried too much. So back to buy. Core items already coming out. Almost an infinity edge here for Phoenix, and that's going to start putting down some good damage. Yeah. Absolutely. There's still no vision coverage in the Baron area for Team Liquid, which is where they need to go next with they've the Kog'Maw. Been, they've been eyes on objective, but it seems like the fight in the bottom is kind of giving them something else to think about. Back on track. Yeah, and this is one of the things that is keeping Team Liquid from being in the conversation of the top teams because they, they have the potential to pull out these big leads like we saw, mm -hmm. was it 5,000 gold at right. seven minutes, basically? Something crazy like that. Uh, but then, every once in a while, Team Liquid will make these great plays in a game, and then also some bad plays in a game. And it will either cost them something in the mid-game. Yeah. In this case, it's not going to cost them the game, but it's definitely delaying the game. Right. They had it set up so they could cleanly take Dragon 3, Baron of 20 minutes, have vision control in the jungle. If they would have just run through all of their things in the proper checkdown fashion. Yeah. Uh, but now they're just a little slow on the play, which gives small opportunities for Team Impulse to come back in. They also have some nice gold to be picked up as well. 204, 103, 205. If those go to the right targets, Impulse may be able to start making an impact in these fights. Phoenix, again, toying, playing with fire there as he gets the package used down. It's like maybe he just doesn't like to let it wear off. He's like, I have to use it somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> That's just every corpse. <laughs> Not, become the next not incredibly deep wards for Team Liquid when they start this Baron. It's more like they're trying to pull a fight in, but a Twisted Face getting teleported in the backside. Tempered Fate goes down, just Piglet was hit. Fang is there, whoa! Dardock flies straight through. Fang's in a 4v1. Dardock tries to fly back to help the team. Monsoon to get Fang out of the fight and take the rock down. What a ping pong pins. of a fight. A magical journey means a double kill here for Piglet. And Liquid danced that one out. 
Yeah, Dardock saw the play and he made the play right there. He went way into Team Impulse to make that kickback. Now it's 5v3 at Baron. Maybe Proxen tries for a steal. He has Flash and Smite. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> oh no. Okay, Matt's all right. Dardock had the Smite. They were smart enough to get it down. And a very valiant try by Proxen to get himself in there. You got to try at this point. Go for broke. Yeah. Well, he is now broke after yeah, going indeed. for broke. Indeed he is. Bearing on everyone for Team Liquid. They don't suffer a single casualty during that entire engagement. Wow. Blade of the Room King completed by Pizzlitz. Raw Portal being completed by Lorlo. This game's going to be over in the next five minutes, I have to say. Let's see this one more time. So Piglets get, gets hit, and then they kind of lose their target if they want yeah. to go in anybody. Well, like, you don't even see Mash on the screen, but the Q that Dardock had landed takes him so close to Mash that he can go in. And then it is a nice four-man Malphite ultimate to delay, but Dardock with his Sterix Gage is able to just kind of walk away from the rest of Team Impulse. I mean, with Malphite ulting in, it's a TF and Italy and Bard <laughs> that are trying to kill him. I don't Cork. really know what Gate was trying to do Cork with again. that magical journey, but it costs him. It's just a follow, follow me, walk this yeah. way. <laughs> follow me into my untimely demise. <laughs> just, okay, sure. We make weird choices when you're about to die. <laughs> yeah. It happens. Oh, it's about an 11,000 gold lead now as Liquid puts their foot down. Here we are driving to the front doorstep, and they are knocking now. No, they do still have a good bit of poke to push Liquid off. They get a good amount of damage every time there's a wave, but these spears, the wild cards coming out are deterring Liquid. Just never mind, Dardock makes me a liar as he stands in the <laughs> inhibitor turret. Jan he's like, he's like deterred? What oh. do you mean deterred? This laser? Oh, Piglet gets out. He's actually going They're to get, get the him. heal down. Monsoon's there. Whoa, Mash goes real hard for that, but there is follow-up from the team to start pushing off Liquid. They were overstaying their welcome a little bit, but can they manage that? Phoenix dives right into the fight. There's the kill from Dardock. Two for Phoenix. The lock onto Proxen. The cat could be going down, but it looks like he's able to skitter away safely, trying to get that over the shoulder onto Matt. This is such a back and forth. Liquid's trying to go for the kills, but they know the eyes on the prize is the Nexus, so they start on the inhibitor. Yeah, the luxury of having two marksmen right there. Pickett goes down, but Phoenix still pumps out yeah. a tremendous amount of damage to this stage in the game. They're looking to end it. It's going to be the first Nexus turret here. A quite clean game coming in from Team Liquid after their 0-2 week and feeling pretty good about this one. A few more kills to rack up the stats. Six zero seven for Phoenix on that one. And Liquid coming up with a very nice win. 27 minutes in, 18-3. Team Liquid takes down Team Impulse. Yeah, and